not everyone does it, but they should. Whether you're in the market to buy a rental property or you already own one, you gotta do the math. So many landlords think they have the numbers figured out, often in their head, but they usually don't. Instead of thinking of what they are, it's better to write them down. So in this episode, we're going to show you how to calculate your cash flow. Now grab a calculator and some bubble gum and let's get popping. This video is brought to you by ushomevalue.com where homeowners and landlords can find out the value of almost any home without spending hundreds on an appraisal. It's good to sit down and understand the flow of money periodically, not just for income tax purposes, but so you can understand where you stand. Otherwise, it's difficult to make sound financial decisions without knowing that information. This is especially true for so many landlords that operate out of one single checking account to manage both their personal and business finances. And in case you forgot, renting out property is a business, even for those with just one unit. Now calculating your cash flow is quite simple. You just need to know your numbers and how to count. So let's explore this on a monthly basis. You can then easily determine the numbers for any longer period of time to better suit your financial goals just in case you're planning on making any improvements or other decisions down the line. So unless you're in a runaway market of insane amounts of appreciation, or perhaps the rental property is considered a family heirloom that must be maintained at all costs, most landlords do strive to stay in an investment only if the cash flow is positive. So let's start with adding up the following monthly expenses. If you don't happen to own your property just yet, then do your research and go with higher estimates just to make sure you are good. That way there's greater potential for an upside surprise. The first item is the mortgage payment. This means everything, the principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Normally the mortgage lender will lump this into one monthly payment, but sometimes taxes and insurance are paid separately. So if that's the case, then be sure to determine their monthly cost in case you pay them in one lump sum annually. Second on the list of what you're gonna need for expenses are the property management fees. This only applies to those that have delegated a person to manage the property, usually for a fee between eight to 10% of the monthly rent. Sometimes there are additional fees charged by property managers. You just wanna make sure that you calculate them to be an average monthly fee so you can add those to your expenses. The third type of an expense would be any maintenance and repairs. Hopefully you've kept track of what's being spent on AC filters, service technicians, lawn care, and so on. If not, you're gonna need them. The next is utilities. If you happen to pay for water, electric, or any other expenses that are included in the rent, then add them up and be careful to take any bi-monthly payments, which are usually common for water and sewer, and reduce them to a monthly equivalent. Also, don't forget, even though you may not be covering any utilities right now, you will have to keep them on during a vacancy. So be sure to consider that in doing your calculations. Next on the list are homeowners association fees. If you have to pay to keep the neighborhood up or any type of clubhouse membership fee, you have to determine its monthly price and write it down. And then finally, vacancies. You don't want to forget about vacancies because every month the unit sits empty is an expense as we just mentioned with utilities. So be sure to account for at least one month out of the year being vacant when you have to pay for things like lawn maintenance, utilities, etc. Mortgage lenders actually attribute a three month vacancy to rental property. But we think one month is a more reasonable calculation unless your rental market is really slow. Now that you've got your expenses, what's your monthly rental income? In other words, how much are the tenants paying? If you have no tenants, then perform a rental property comparative market analysis by analyzing similar properties for rent and what their asking prices are. Unlike the sales market, monthly residential rent prices are usually not subject to negotiation. Or if you prefer not to spend the time doing a calculation, you can always pay for a report such as the US rent value report from ushomevalue.com. They'll actually show you comparable properties currently for rent 
and then estimate your rent value for your subject property. And now finally, it's time to calculate your cash flow. Take your monthly rental income and subtract your monthly expenses from it. And that's your number. We hope it's a positive one. Stay tuned for more videos that will discuss other investment property calculations.